Well, my background at first is in marketing and communication, so that's my professional background. I first joined this movement uh, 20 years ago when I was uh, at the age of 20 uh, in the communication department of the Brazilian Paralympic Committee. Uh, then I found that this was my, my movement, a movement I belong to. Uh, so I moved to the, I would say, the, to the more uh, strategic area, which uh, I became, the, so I became the Secretary General of the Brazilian Paralympic Committee, where I stayed for eight years. Then I was elected President of the National Paralympic Committee of Brazil, where I stayed for, for also for eight years. I had some positions in the IPC structure, such as Chair of the IPC Regions Council, Chair of the IPC Paralympic Games Committee, then I got elected for the board and then vice president, by, which is the uh, position I currently hold. Uh, and my motivation, it's everything is about passion. You know, I'm passionate about the movement, I'm passionate about the athletes and the change that they inspire. I have seen in my country, in my region, in the whole world, uh, the change of perception, the change of the reality that the athletes' performances on the field of play, they can promote. So, but for do that, in order to do that, we have to provide the right pathway. We have to provide the best services to the athletes, and that is what my my candidacy is about. I want to provide the best services to the athletes, to the nations, to the federations, so that we can have uh, a clear pathway for athletes, and then they can inspire new generations of of persons with an impairment to become new athletes, and then we can change the world. I think this is the ultimate goal of the IPC is to foster for a better society for persons with an impairment through sport. I was paralyzed one day when I was five. Uh, the doctor told my mother uh, that I could not stand up again. No, could I go to school? I knew how it act, what desire meant, and uh, I also learned that where there is a will, there is a way. I began to learn on my own and uh, never uh, let a single day uh, sleep by with no gain. Later, I became a, a doctor and uh, cured many villagers who came to me for help. Uh, later, I became a writer and I uh, have published novels and uh, selected works even the play I wrote has been shot into an interesting movie. I love sports uh, very much. Uh, in 1994, uh, I took part in an international competition of 10 meter air pistol shooting as uh, the president of China Paralympic Committee, I had headed the China's delegation uh, to the uh, 2012 London Paralympic Summer um, Games, uh, the 2014 Sochi Paralympic Winter Games, and the uh, 2014 Asia Para Games. In September uh, 2016, my team topped the medal table for the fourth time in Rio. As a vice president of Beijing 2022 Olympic Winter Games Speed Committee, I made a presentation on behalf of Beijing at the uh, 100 uh, uh, 128th uh, session of the International Olympic, uh, Olympic Committee. I have been the uh, executive president of the Beijing 2022 uh, Olympic and the Paralympic Winter Games organization, organizing committee since uh, 20, uh, 2015. I'm sure that Beijing will pre, uh, present a uh, fantastic, extraordinary, and uh, excellent uh, Paralympic Winter Games in 2022. I always believe that people uh, can change the world. Uh, I also believe that courage inspires and uh, positive change uh, and the hard work can transform lives. Uh, to prove the above, 
My life is the, I think my life is the very lucky uh, and a happy example. I'm ready to lead and to have a more lucky and happy lives uh, at uh, every corner of the global. Yes, absolutely. I'm, uh, I'm 47 years old. I am married to uh, have two kids and um, yeah, born with my disability. Uh, back in 1970 uh, and um, I was uh, in that beginning, I was, uh, you can say in Denmark, put a little bit aside. I went to, uh, I went to school uh, and a home only for people with uh, disabilities and, and grew up there. Uh, I was home at my parents, but uh, normally they have an impression at that time that uh, in the normal world and in Denmark that if you are look, look like me with a, a disability, you have also something wrong in your, in your head. So um, I was starting there uh, and then, then I, I started the school classes and uh, my parents uh, found out that I, 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 didn't, I didn't learn so much. Uh, so I will put a little bit uh, back if compared with uh, able-bodied persons um, at my age. So they said uh, we need to do something and uh, we find uh, a school, a uh, public school for, for you can say able-bodied people. And I went there on a test period because uh, you know um, many people are looking at you and uh, look at that small guy look at him he has no arms he can uh, he has no fingers on his uh, hand and, and so on and I was um, you can say it, it was uh, it's, the feeling was uh, tough for me at that time so but I, I went to that test and uh, after this test I started in that school and that was my first you can say barrier I I came over as a, as a person with a disability and um, then I became too fat because I was playing football with my, with my fellows uh, at the school and also uh, at the street. And, uh, but my legs could not uh, take that pressure for playing football. So I was in a, in a wheelchair for, for eight weeks and I, I became too fat. So I went to my doctor and he said, if you are not doing any sport, you will have to sit in your wheelchair the rest of your life. And uh, that was the, the kick he gave me. Uh, so I went home and said, I, I have to do some sport. And uh, I found out in a, in, a, in a city very close to where I lived uh, that there was a, a club for, for people with a disability doing different kinds of sports. So I started swimming. And um, very, very fast I was showing that I was good at it. So I uh, first I became Nordic champion and then I was competing in 1984 and then it was yeah five times Paralympian six gold and uh, 15 medals in total so the the aspiration for me it's uh, it's it's, it's a, like a sportsman it's uh, also that I am born with my disability I have shown that I can overcome uh, different uh, barriers I can handle discrimination and I know how it is to be a person with a disability but I also know how it it's, it's feel when you are doing sport and all the recognition and awareness and, and so on. And now we are in London, it's, it's amazing. Uh, the 2012 uh, Paralympic Games, but also now at the World Athletic, Para-Athletics Championships. So I think I can bring that in from, from my perspective, uh, but also that I have been a businessman before, uh, because uh, together with my, my swimming and my training, I was educated as, um, as a state authorized public accountant and have worked for over 20 years at uh, KBMG and Ernst & Young in, in total. Was going up to a level as the director as, uh, at Ernst & Young. Um, but then due to some restructuring, I found out to, to build my own company in the beginning of 2014 and I, we started six persons there and uh, after, after three years we went over 40 people and to commit myself uh, to, the, to the presidency of IPC I sold my, my company so I am only my, my little myself in a little company in Denmark now so um, yeah I know how to create I'm an entrepreneur uh, doing things and I, I really like to do that so 
I have also the business aspect into it and, uh, and the sports person and, 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 and then you can say me as a, as a person. Um, and my kids are doing sport on a, on a high level. My, my son is 20 years, he's playing football and my daughter is 16, he, she's a swimmer like her father. And I found my wife, we have been married for 22 years, I found my wife in the swimming pool because where should I f else find a, a girl <laughs> who likes the, to train as much as I did as a, as a Paralympian. So you can say that's, that's from my, my perspective, that's my qualification to go into the, to the presidency. And then besides this, I have uh, been Paralympic leader for many years. After my swimming career, I, um, I was elected Immediately after I went up uh, off the pool in, in Sydney in 2000 as a board member of the Danish uh, National Paralympic Committee. Uh, after five years I was elected uh, vice president and I'm still vice president of the National Paralympic Committee of Denmark. And then in uh, 2009 I was elected president of the European Paralympic Committee and uh, have just stepped down just to again to commit myself to be in a position as president of IPC. And in 2013, I was uh, elected as an uh, IPC governing board member um, there. So, uh, yeah, 17 years as a Paralympic uh, politician and uh, Paralympic leader. So that's, that's the reason I'm, I'm sitting here and standing for the IPC presidency. A little bit about myself. I've been admired in the Paralympic movement for over 30 years with a bit of a lucky introduction to it in terms of I was working and met a coach, but over the 30 years I've had this unwavering belief in the possibilities of the Paralympic movement. Uh, my motivation for looking to run for president is something I considered long and hard because the responsibilities and commitment will be enormous. And I recognize that. Uh, given my background that 30 years has not been my job, it's been my life's journey and my life's passion. I, I stepped back and looked, what do I have to offer to help contribute uh, to the Paralympic movement. So I, I have a firm belief that more is possible. And when I say more is possible, it's not about more athletes, more competitions, more games, but redefining ourselves as the best possible organization and the best possible movement. And I think that with my skills and experience, I'd like to be part of and contribute to leading that effort to define the best possible outcome for ourselves. Well, I think we have gone along such a long way. I think it's we move from being a, a disability organization to become now a sport organization. And I would say it's one of the most prestigious organizations, sport organizations in the world because of the way we operate. We are open, we are transparent, we are clean, and because of the services that we provide to our athletes. So now we have, I would say, the, we are part of the biggest sport event in the world, which is the Olympic and Paralympic Games. I, I don't see them as two. Uh, separate or standalone events. They are part of an integral festival of sport that gathers every two years in winter and summer. So I think that to consolidate that position in the, as a sport movement that it generates uh, and it has a huge impact on the, on the world and in, 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 in the society, uh, I think it's fantastic and it's what we achieved uh, these years. I think uh uh, the Paralympic uh, movement, uh, the important thing is uh, to inspire uh, everyone everywhere. <laughs> uh, in my theory, we are not only making, uh, working for the gold medals. We work more for the massive participation of para sports. When we uh, have many, many, many people to be with us in the games, I think it is very important. It is uh, uh, inevitable uh, that China achieved the most gold medals. I celebrate uh, for the massive part participation rather than the gold medals. I so I think uh, the. Uh, so many people can participate in our games, it's very important. The most remarkable is, is the increase in, in, the, in athletes' amounts and sports at the Paralympic Games. Going back to 1960 in Rome, we, there were, I think there were 400 athletes at that time. 
and now we we see we saw in in Rio 4,350 from amazing number of nations, and and I think that's that's the awareness uh, you can say raising on and also the spread of the Paralympic sport into the entire world, and for me that's that's the mo that's the, the the most impressive we have done is to increase the athletes participation uh, and the number of nations participate in in the games and uh, and it will also it's also creating uh, social awareness around the entire world and it's it's better to also for the inclusion of of people with a disability into the into the society so and that's uh, that's also you can say the the aspiration of the Paralympic uh, movement is to uh, to make a more inclusive society through a Paralympic sport. The most remarkable achievement is where do you where do you begin? But I think if you step back, people would be absolutely staggered by the exponential growth of the movement. I think uh, even in my first competition back in 1990, which was a world championships, to see the changes over that time. But if if you contrast Tokyo from 64 to, to the games coming up in 2020, uh, you know, 21 countries to 160. It's that massive growth, but also the quality of the sport. And where it used to be a bit of a boutique thing that very few people knew about the Paralympics or the Paralympic movement, now we're a bit in the mind's eye of the world and we're front and center. So that, would, to me, is the most remarkable thing, uh, is the growth and the performance of the athletes and the growth of the movement. I think one of the, we are a sport organization and as such I think sport in a very crucial moment in time. Uh, we have faced not the IPC but the sport world many issues regarding credibility, things uh, such as doping, uh, uh, you know, corruption. The IPC is a very clean and open and transparent organization but we are in the sport environment so we have to face that. We have to understand that we have to remain as transparent as clean, as open as we always were, and even more, we have to you know, move a step further in that, in that direction. But also I, th I think that we need to provide more and more services to our membership. I think this is the biggest challenge, so we can bring them all together. The 365 days of the year, you know, the Paralympic movement uh, cannot be in the eyes of the, of the public only every four years or every two years. And this has to do with the day-to-day -day activities of all of our membership. In some countries, they, I would say they live Paralympic sport every day. In some countries, it's possible to do that. So the consumers of the Paralympic sport, the fans, because this is something we still uh, are building, our base of fans, people who consume. And by consuming, I mean follow on the social media. They watch the TV. They follow on the news. They know the names of the athletes. They cheer for the athletes. They know where the next competition is going to take place. So I think we still don't have that. Uh, of course, when we have big championships like you know world championships in athletics and swimming, uh, the Paralympic Games, of course, but we have to uh, build our base of fans, and we have to get, we have to be able to uh, reach the membership in the four corners of the world, and so that they feel the IPC as a reliable partner, as someone he, who, as an organ organization that can help them in their day to day. Not that it is just an organization that organizes events, but someone who they can trust. We can help them in their national uh, environment to go to again get to their next level, and then prov they can provide better services for the athletes in their environment. And then we can have a complete pathway from grassroots to elite. Uh, I think uh, the very important uh, question. Uh, we human always face the challenge wherever you are, uh, whatever you do. I think IPC also have a lot of challenge, challenges. Uh, for example, uh, the Paralympic border needs uh, further uh, uh, advancement, uh, a, consistent, a, consistent, a consistent and uh, uh, sufficient funding is required. More uh, support can only be uh, secured uh, be, uh, by extending the influence of our brand. I think the brand is very important. Second, 
the movement need to give more attention uh, to sport for all. Uh, we should development, uh, develop more uh, platforms to encourage and help more people uh, with an impairment to uh, enjoy the sports. More resources need to be uh, mobili uh, mobilized for public, public uh, engagement. And then more in uh, inclusion uh, will be fostered uh, regarding uh, society's attitudes. Uh, third, many NPCs face difficulties to offer uh, uh, athletes to games. There are a heavily a shortage of training. Uh, more opportunities should be uh, shared with uh, uh, athletes from, uh, from developing countries. So we will help them and get uh, none uh, left behind. Yeah, but, but my first thing, as I, I, I almost said, is, is to get to get uh, in contact with IOC and to bring that uh, that relation back to uh, to to um, to a good relation, and, um, and 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 then on a, on a long term, we we also need to to look at the governing structure because we we have a different governing structure, uh, meaning that we have some sports. We are also the IPC is the governing body of ten sports. And we have uh, 15 sports members of, of the IPC, and they are they are governing by different organizations, different sports organizations. So, in my point of view, we need to we need to look at that structure, and 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 to f to further develop this, meaning that we cannot do IPC sports independent by just just a click. We need to uh, we need to uh, to have the uh, financial sustainable, and and we need to have a setup of them for creating activities for them so they, they still is uh, on a high level and creating opportunities also for the mainstream sport in, in, in those sports. So I think that's it's on the long term we, we need to build on this and um, so I think that's, that's the most important issues. There's a number of challenges and from I guess my 12 years on the governing board having some insights into successes and some of the challenges we face. I would go to two things right now in terms of leading with sport. I know that our aspiration is to make an inclusive society, but there is nothing that demonstrates capability more quickly and easily than athletic performance. So to continue with sport first, that's a challenge and how that is actually approached and developed in the different regions. So for example, is countries and regions have unique differences and unique challenges. We need to provide that opportunity for sport performance at various levels and ensure that that is fully entrenched and that countries and athletes feel they have an equitable opportunity. The level playing field is the other aspect what I would see as a significant challenge for us and under level playing field that would include things such as you know the anti-doping and, and trying to ensure fair competition but for us Paralympics is classification and classification is Paralympics. So a lot of great effort has gone into the new uh, athlete classification code what we need to be really diligent on is monitoring its implementation, listening to the athletes and providing some reasonable answers and movement forward based on their input. But I think that would be a genuine measure of success, that after four years, there is renewed confidence from all the athletes, the coaches and the administrators in our systems, two of those key ones being our classification approach and our diligence regarding anti-doping. Well, I think I have a very good track record in my own country, my own region, of being able to transform the reality. I come from a, ve from a developing country, uh, which 20 years ago was in a very difficult moment. Sport was not, Paralympic sport was not even recognized by the Brazilian law. But we were able to change that by working with communication, with broadcasters, providing services to the athletes, creating a pathway that goes from school sport to a post-career program so athletes you know when they when they first uh, appear in the in the brazilian paralympic movement they know they have a path it's clear for them and they know they can count on the brazilian paralympic committee as a reliable partner so i think i have this experience of transforming a country that who is now top 10 in the world uh, i 
know how is to face uh, the challenges that many of our members face, which is have almost no budget, but you know, using creativity, having a long-term approach, a long-term strategy, knowing where we're gonna, go, where we want to go, and how to achieve that. So, uh, I've been, uh, I've been there where many of our members uh, are at this moment in time. So I can understand the reality, and I can understand them to get to their next level. Uh, and I think I have the experience. I have very good relationships with, m I would say, the majority of our NPCs and regions. I've been the chair of the IPC Regions Council, so I understand the role of the region. I've been the chair of the IPC Paralympic Games Committee, so I, I really understand this, the potential of this product that we have and how participating in Paralympic Games can help to boost Paralympic sport in the specific countries. Uh, and I have a very good experience also uh, with some of our main partners, such as the IOC, being a member of two of the commissions. I think it's our most important partner because this concept of one city, two games, it's here to stay. We are not changing. Uh, and we have to maximize and we have to strengthen our relationship with the IOC. So I think I have many uh, assets, many strengths that puts me in a very good position to be the next IPC president. And I know that the membership, they value that. And I think that they can have a very reliable person as president who understand their challenges, but it's also able to move the organization forward. Oh, <laughs> it's very interesting. Yes, I am. I think I'm the right one because I have the right skills and experiences. Uh, number one, the leadership skills. Yes, I'm a leader of a, a Paralympic movement in the most popular country of the world. My Chinese team uh, topped the medal tables at four uh, Paralympic Games. Just now I said that. Getting the maximum uh, number of people uh, involved in the Games uh, is even harder. Mm, achieving the t uh, the medals, so uh, I want uh, to uh, lead the uh, Paralympic movement. I think I can because I have the drive to to continue the um, the great work as, <coughs> as uh, Sir Philip uh, Craven has done for the last sixteen years. He has done an incredible uh, work, but I have the drive. Um, I'm a, I'm, a, I'm a person with a disability. I'm a sportsman. I have competed in five Paralympic Games. I have been in the movement for 35 years. Um, I'm a businessman. I'm used to negotiate also uh, with, uh, with big companies. And by the way, awareness racing is one thing. And then the outcome of this is sponsorship. It's also to make new sponsorship, like the Toyota sponsorship we have. Um, and I can I can bring new uh, new resource a uh, new um, revenue income stream into this together with with uh, with with IPC and the management team and all the the consultants we we have around it and uh, so the business aspect is also very important and 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 then I I think myself as a, as a good leader uh, I have the skills I have the experience I have I have shown a lot of results doing my my um, my presidency of, of EPC, where I've made a lot of uh, uh, good relation with the EU, and the EU is an institutional uh, where we also have to uh, to be there. We have to, and 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 we have made in the in the European Paralympic Committee a voice and a brand and an image of the Paralympic movement in the, in the European Union, and um, so I have the experience in in this one and. I will not forget anybody. It's very important. This is an umbrella organization. So it's not only, uh, you can say, certain NPCs, certain sport. We need them all. And we need them all to, to, uh, to be unified and, and, and work together to, to the benefit for the athletes and for the sport. I would take a look at this that, you know, four candidates with all, you know, unique ca capabilities, unique qualities. For myself, I think it's my depth and breadth of experience. I've over 30 years in this, but I, if I was to take a look at it, you could measure it in terms of what, what is leadership truly about? And for me, it's, it comes down to two facets. Engendering trust 
in your membership, your athletes, and all those who are engaged in the Paralympic movement. And the other aspect is the competence. So character, competence, so engendering trust. You take a look at character, and it, what is your intent? Are you a caring, transparent, open person? Are you tolerant? And in terms of the things, are you integrity, which is just not about honesty, but it's consistency and it's fairness. On the competence side, it's really about your knowledge, your skills and experience. And I think in terms of my knowledge, skills and experience, in terms of international relations, games experience as a professional sport administrator now with snowboard, that, that is a strength. But also in terms of what your results might be. And the results is also just not measured in performance, but in terms of your reputation, your credibility. And I think spanning across that, the two aspects I said is one is engendering trust in our members. Is, is key and central to that. And then the other piece is developing future leaders. And I think with my professional background as a trainer is looking to the next generation of leaders. And I would appeal to my, the members, that is a unique skill set that I would bring is to, to look to develop the next generation of leaders. So a bit of building on the past and bridging to the future.